And that is that, you guys. Um, wow. Last thing I was expecting this Monday. Frank Lampard's been sacked. It's official now. He's out. He's sacked. Um, that's the end of Frank Lampard's. Obviously, Lampard's, you know, things didn't go in your favour. You know, circumstances were especially hard. Yeah, you know, he did an amazing job here, in my personal opinion. Last season especially, when no manager wanted the job, Frank came in, stepped up and got us into a UCL sport where, you know, better managers, more experienced ones, were too scared to come and do anything. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of thoughts and opinions, you guys. There's going to be so much videos coming out today. Yeah, let's just start with what Roman had to say about Lampard sacking. Anyway, I guess due to the magnitude of this sacking, Roman Abramovich has come out and, uh, you know, actually given a few words. So as it says from Roman, this was a very difficult decision for the club, not least because I have an excellent personal relation with Frank and I have the utmost respect for him. He is a man of great integrity and has the highest of work ethics. However, under current circumstances, we believe it's best to change managers on behalf of everyone at the club, the board and personally, I would like to thank Frank for his work as head coach and wish him every success in the future. He's an important icon of this great club and his status here remains undiminished. He will be warmly welcomed back at Stamford Bridge. Um, that's from Roman, who knows where this guy is, just doing his thing. Uh, guess he had to have his words. Thomas Tuchel is about to sign on an 18 month contract. Chelsea Football Club, as always, Chelsea Football Club, congrats, congrats, congrats. No patience, no time, no nothing. I mean, it's going to be hard for me to collect all my thoughts immediately, you guys. Expect there to be, to be more videos coming out today where I can fully just break down what I've been reading today. The news that's absolutely broken and come from nowhere. Uh, for this while, I'm going to focus on the story today. There is going to be another video coming out giving my thoughts and opinions on Lampard sacking the boards, Marina, etc, etc. And obviously what Lampard sacking is going to mean for the future of the club as well. Um, because it is going to mean something. It will mean something. But I think to kick things off, you guys, you know, the reports came out from Mr. Matt Law. And when Matt Law reports something, you know, it's, it's real. It's true. And... The mad thing is, is that uh, me and a few other men were hearing that Lampard was going to get at least three games to change things. However, in the end, based on reports that have come out from Matt Law, reports that have come out from The Athletic as well, from Simon Johnson and Cohen, many, many, many more. Lampard's done. He's out of here. And, you know, it gets me thinking about other managers like Klopp. I mean, how many winless runs has he been on ever since he signed for Liverpool? You know, I look at Arteta. Uh, Arteta got 14 points from 14 games. You look at uh, Pep Guardiola when he first signed for City, winless in 6-2. Why is it that other clubs can afford to have that patience if we can't? I mean, I, I don't understand. Um, but to be honest, based on some of the reports coming out, you guys, it seems like maybe things could have been a bit deeper. I'm going to be breaking down the news first so we can just understand what the hell is happening today. But yes, you guys, to start with the first story, Thomas Tuchel was about to sign on an 18-month contract. Now, Tuchel, when he left Paris in Germain, was throwing out feelers everywhere. He threw out feelers to Arsenal, he threw out feelers to lots of Premier League clubs. He was desperate to get straight back into management, which of course, you know, he's of course he's entitled to. Thomas Tuchel is a great tactician. But one of the fears behind what Tuchel was feeling was that obviously seeing uh, Laurent Blanc won so many things to Paris in Germain when he left. Got no job, no opportunities. My guy's still playing golf in Dubai. And, you know, he's just become a forgotten manager. And, you know, too cool with his rep, you know, left Mines on a bad note. Left Dortmund on a bad note. I mean, how do you leave a family club like Dortmund in bad bloods? With all those young men, doesn't really make sense. And, you know, similar situations happen at Paris Saint Germain. Now, of course, that's on a personal point of view. But that doesn't take away from his managerial ability because the guy is absolutely amazing. So, if I was to put my emotions aside for a second, of course, you know, Tuchel is a good appointment, but, you know, part of me feels like, is this, like, slightly a panic one in that sense? Because, of course, the club made an offer for Nagelsmann first, and, you know, we didn't want to wait until the summer for Nagelsmann. I guess, obviously, missing out on Pochettino. If Pochettino was still on the market, you would have bet your bottom dollars he would have been the first choice candidate immediately, but... 
you know, I guess the club, you know, they've realised the mistakes over the years and Tuchel was the appointment now. He's on a free and meaning that, you know, sacking Lampard, paying him off, paying off the coaching staff, etc, etc, is okay in the sense that you're not really paying too much money to sign Tuchel on an 18-month contract. So, 18 months, of course, is not that mad. Seems like it's a short-term one in case anything does happen with Tuchel too. I mean, of course, you know, they know uh, the history of the manager. But to be honest, Tuchel has been at this club prior, you guys. I've reported on it before we signed Sari. Tuchel had meetings with the club. He knew about all the youth players, all the young guys. And quite naturally, you know, he left a good impression on the club ever since. And now that he's available, now that he kind of has an understanding of the club already, from a business point of view, it does make sense that Tuchel would be that candidate to replace Frank Lampard. But now... Now, it seems like Tuchel's job now is going to be to get the best out of Timo Werner and Kai Havertz. Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Tuchel does this, based on the notion that, you know, Werner and Havertz, they've come out in interviews, they've spoken about the intensity of the Premier League. Of course, they knew it was difficult, but actually being involved in it, actually playing, you know, it does bring up some uh, interesting dilemmas for them. So I wonder how Tuchel is going to be able to instantly get these guys up and firing, considering that, you know, it's not the Bundesliga, it's the Premier League. So that's going to be interesting to see. Now, moving back to Frank Lampard, it was believed by a lot of people that he was going to get at least three games to be able to turn things around. But it seems like things turned on a sour note. After that defeat to Leicester City, his fate was sealed, similar to Ancelotti in that sense. And, uh... You know, I guess this is how we respect the guys who, you know, kind of put us on the map when it comes to helping us win trophies and giving us that, you know, worldwide reputation. But I guess, you know, football is ultimately a business compared to the emotion of the game, the love of the game, all that type of stuff. You know, this club proves that and I guess, you know, they stick to that standards that they set at this club. But ultimately, ultimately, it seems like Lampard lost his job in the end due to some simmering tension with other players behind the scenes at the club. And of course, some simmering tension between him and Marina as well. So it doesn't really surprise me on that note. Uh, I think there's been a massive reason why Lampard has been calling for these guys to be, you know, sold on, to be moved on. I get it from a tactical footballing perspective, but from a business point of view, in Marina's opinion, she's probably thinking, you know, I've spent a, a hundred million on Kovacic and Jorginho. I, I, I've got players on massive wages that is difficult to move on you know I spent a lot of money on players over the years and you know I'm expecting there to be some tactical solution found to get the best out of all these guys and in my personal opinion football is not that simple it's not FIFA when you build a team build a squad these guys have to complement each other fully you know they have to be able to understand each other's game etc etc and I guess the reality is you know making so many new signings you know, I guess that brings some difficulties in regards to integration because, you know, ideally you need a pre-season, five weeks, all those games in between to, you know, build that core and that identity. And, you know, COVID brought many difficulties as we're seeing with all the clubs in the Premier League. I mean, there's a reason why we don't know by now who's leading this race to win the Premier League because, you know, how many different clubs have been leading the Premier League at points during this season? But... Ultimately, ultimately, it does seem like it was a simmering tension between Lampard and Marina. And the moment that happens, as we've seen with uh, guys like Sari who complained about not getting certain investment, as we saw from Conte very publicly, you know, Conte, at least this guy had ambition, you know, he wanted to get your Van Dykes, your Sanchez's, your Lukaku's, and the ball let him down with that. And, you know, Conte wasn't having that. So, you know, again, you know, this guy sticks to his words. So it's going to be interesting to see how Marina coats with Tuchel, another manager that is known for those same types of things. It's belief that the deteriorating relationship between Lampard and players, of course, they weren't named specifically. They probably won't be names. Will we, will we ever find out? Who knows? But I think it's quite obvious to tell maybe who those potential players could be. You know, if you're a player that... You know, you've got the Euros coming up this summer. You know, you're a senior player, you're on big money and, you know, you're kind of just out the team straight. I mean, you kind of force the manager to do that. You force them to do that. Let's not pretend that a lot of these guys weren't listed in the summertime. You know, Jorginho, Roma, Juventus, absolutely nothing. Alonso and Emerson had the entire Serie A after them. No business done. Looking at Rudiger, you know, Tuchel wanted to use him at, at Paris and Germain. No deal was done for that either. And of course, we rejected him going to other clubs, meaning that guys like your Tamoris, of course, got to get loaned out because you can't have five centre backs in the team. And seniors will always take priority. Of course, the athletic report it revealed a lot. Um, Kepa Aretha Balaga, uh, of course, 
his form hasn't been too great. You know, it's a bit shameful that he's had to, uh, you know, block comments on his social media pages because, you know, fans these days are absolute morons sometimes, got no respect, no nothing. But of course, you know, she splashed out nearly 72 million in this guy, 190,000 a week, and his form isn't there. Is that Lampard's fault for making this form bad? I don't know entirely. I think for me, as always, it comes down to uh, signing players that fit a, a system, a, a ethos, you know, that complement each other tactically. We sign Kepra as a ball playing goalkeeper who hasn't demonstrated that at all, to be honest. I mean, Mendy plays the ball a lot better than him. And for me, this is kind of Marina, in my, in my opinion, kind of saving face a little bit. But I feel like that's going to be another video that comes out today that I can just fully discuss and give my thoughts and opinions on you guys. But um, I guess we got to get ready for Thomas Tuchel. He's going to be here. He's going to be signed very soon. And it'll be interesting to see how he does. Now, I'm going to let you guys know straight. Of course, I'm not happy that Lampard's been sacked in this manner, especially when there's so many football reasons that have gone against him that haven't been done to, to help him, really, in my personal opinion. But, you know, Thomas Tuchel is his own separate kettle of fish. I'm not going to be projecting any insecurities on him. I'm not going to be unfair with Tuchel because as I've been consistent with this channel over the five years I've been running this thing, you know, I give every single manager we sign a chance and opportunity. So it's going to be the same energy for Tuchel. It's not his fault that Lampard's getting sacked. Of course not. I'm not going to be doing that biased nonsense. I'm going to see what he does and analyse things too. But yeah, you guys, it's uh, it's a bit mad, to be honest. Um, Lampard's gone just like that. <sighs> you know, for a while, I've always had thoughts on this board. I've always felt like our board's been the bottleneck for a lot of the reasons why we've seen stagnation, for the reasons why... I mean, I can't even get started on this. You know, you guys, you know, I need to talk about this in a separate video to keep things focused. But, but damn, uh, Super Frankie Lampard's, you know, he's gone, you guys. Um, over for him. And, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's a madness. It really is a shame, to be honest. Especially in a manner like this. Yeah, you guys, hear more thoughts and opinions later today.